Okay, YouTube, in this video we're going to be describing uh, <clears throat> families of functions and really specifically focusing on what we refer to as fam, or excuse me, parent functions. So let's go ahead and start up here. We say functions that belong to the same family. Basically, they share all the same characteristics. So you can see I have all four families of functions that we're about to graph here manually listed on the right side, and they all have names. We say that they are either constant, linear, absolute value, or quadratic. There's certainly more families of functions, but basically what I want you to understand is functions that exist in the same family are really just transformations of these original parent functions. So we could say that, let's say hypothetically I wanted to graph a line and my line looks like this. I could say that that is no more than just the parent function that's been maybe vertically shrunk down towards the x-axis a little bit, okay? Or maybe, you know, we take this line and we shift it up. You know, we could call this a translation transformation of the original function where all the output values are shifted up or down by the same amount. So before we kind of get into transformations, what we want to do is we want to know the basic characteristics of all four of these families of functions. So what we're going to do very, very quickly here is construct all of these on the left. I do want to do that uh, by creating a table of values. Some of these are notable in that uh, when you create the table of values, you know, it kind of throws people at first. So let's go ahead and, uh, and fill out a set of arbitrary values to plug into our constant function here. We refer to this as a constant function, and the reason why is because Consider finding f of negative 2. If we were to plug negative 2 into this function, you'll notice that there is no x variable over here. So no matter what you plug in, what we're going to get for a series of outputs is essentially we're always going to get 1. So on the right here, we can see that this is just a constant horizontal line. On the left, if we were to actually find all five of these points here, I know it's a very small graph, but then connect the dots, what you're going to see is the reason why it is referred to as a constant function, we're going to label this here f of x equals 1, is because it'll always be at the height of that constant. No matter what the input is, we're always going to get that same output, okay? So this is a constant function. Now let's go ahead and consider our linear function. If we were to plug in a linear function here, we have x and g of x equals x. Essentially what we're saying here is this, whatever our x value is going to be on this, our y value is going to be exactly the same thing. When you plug that in, g of x is equal to whatever the x is here. So when you graph points such as these, what you start to notice is that these points kind of proceed kind of like that picture on the right up there, but uh, in this fashion, okay, and we say that this is our identity function. Another way to look at this is a parent function of the linear function. This is the most basic linear function that we can graph, okay? That's what we mean by a parent function. A parent function is the most basic function in a family, okay? So here's our linear function. We're gonna go ahead and inspect our absolute value and quadratic. It's worth our time to recall what we mean by absolute value and absolute value. Uh, basically, what it is asking is how far that value is from zero on the number line. And it's good to recall that well, when you talk about distances, distance is really never negative. So if I were to say, what is h of 2, h of negative 2, rather, I'd really be saying, well, then it's the absolute value of negative 2. But remember, the absolute value of negative 2 is just 2 because 2 is 2 units away from 0 on the number line. So it's just going to be 2, and we have 1, this is going to be 0, and this is 1, and this is 2. So you'll notice that this is very similar to a linear function, except for all of our outputs happen to be positive. So if I were to graph 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 2, it looks like this. But if we go back 1 and up 1 and back 2 and up 2, what you start to see, you know, if we're going to describe the characteristics of this graph, is a function that looks like AV. I'm going to write that down. Any function in the absolute value family looks like the letter B, okay, and it's very, very similar to a linear function. And then last but not least, our quadratic function. Taking a look at this one's values here, we have x and we have j of x is equal to x squared. Now remember, x squared means to take uh, the value that you're sticking in and multiply it by itself. So for instance, if we were to find j of 0, we'd say, well, 0 times 0 is 0. If we were to find j of 1, well, 1 squared is 1 times 1 is 1. But now notice when you take 2 times 2, we get actually 4. And likewise, if we were to square a negative, the interesting thing is about it, since you're taking it times itself, negative 1 times negative 1 is just a positive 1, and negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. So similar to an absolute value in that all of our outputs here happen to be negative, but when we graph these, for instance, 0, 0, 1, 1, but then we get 2, 4. If we were to plug in 3, we get 3 way up here at 9, okay? What we get is not something that is V-shaped, but it is a curve, and we refer to this curve as a parabola, okay? So it looks like the letter U. Letter U, and it is called a parabola. 
Okay, so we have all of these uh, families of functions listed here. These are referred to as the parent functions. Again, we refer to these as the parent functions because every function in these families is just a transformation of these original parent functions. So we want to, last but not least, list the domain or range of these functions. Now recall, domain is another way of saying input values or x values. Or the range is another way of saying the output values or the y values or function values. So when we look at these functions here, one thing I want to point out is that all of their domains are all real x values. That is, these functions, you can plug in any x value and that will be acceptable to give you an output back. So we can see that all of these span from left to right forever and ever and will represent every x value on our independent variable axis. Whereas we talk about range, now range is a little bit different. When you talk about the range of the constant function, our output is always 1. So we say, what is the range of values that we get back? or what are the range of values we get back for the constant function, we'll notice that our range is just y equals 1. Whereas if we look at our linear function, well, I notice that every y value is represented on this graph. So we have all real numbers for our y values, and then the last ones here, they have something in common. We only represent y values that are non-negative or greater than or equal to 0. And of course, we would write them this way. We say y is greater than or equal to 0, but you'll notice that on the absolute value graph, we don't ever use any negative y values, at least not on the parent function. We only use y values that are starting at zero and go up forever and ever, okay? So our goal is to be able to identify these family of functions, uh, you know, so that we can identify to which family these functions belong. So before we sign off on this video, here's what I'd like to do. We're going to graph these two functional relations here, and once we make this graph, we're also going to graph its parent function, and then we're going to describe the transformations that have taken place from the parent function to the new function. And as a, an additional step here, we're going to identify the domain range of the function. So let's take a look at this first function here. We have uh, f of x. And we say that f of x is defined using the rule uh, 2 times the absolute value of our input and then 2 away from that. So just using a good range of values, I have negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. But let's go ahead and play around with this. So if we said f of negative 2, what we're really going to get is 2 times the absolute value of negative 2 minus 2, which is really 2 times a positive 2. So 4 minus 2 gives us 2. So we have an output of 2. When we plug in 1, now we have f of negative 1. We're going to get 2 times the absolute value of negative 1 minus 2, which is 2 times a positive 1 minus 2, which is 0. When we plug in 0, this is going to be a little bit easier to evaluate because anything times 0 is just 0. So we get really 0 minus 2 is negative 2. Proceeding with 1, we have f of 1 is 2 times the absolute value of 1 minus 2. And you can see how this is going to kind of repeat what we had as an output for f of negative 1, but we get 0 again. Okay. And then last but not least, when you plug in f of 2, we're going to get the same value in this particular instance as we did when we plugged in a negative 2. So we get 2 times positive 2 minus 2 is 4. 4, sorry, not 4, 2. So graphing these, we have negative 2, comma 2. We'll go left 2, up 2, okay? And then we have left 1, up 0. We have 0, comma, negative 2, 1, comma, 0 and 2 comma 2. So let's go ahead and play a little connect the dots here and I do want to make sure that we label this here. This is our transformation and we're referring to this as f of x. Now usually we call the parent function f of x but remember the parent function here started at the origin and goes up one right one kind of in both directions here and that's the parent function here. It looks like this. So if we were to look at this now and I kinda of get a little crooked line there but we say this is the parent. What I would like to do is describe the transformation that took place. So what I'm seeing here is it seems to me that this new blue graph was translated or shifted, translated, down two units. Okay, And I also know that the new function is a little bit skinnier, skinnier than the parent. Okay, We're going to refer to that as a vertical stretch. Okay, So the last thing I did want to identify was domain and range. Now I notice that the domain, the input values, this graph spans left to right for good. So we say the domain is all real x. And then the range is going to be, it looks like all y values greater than or equal to negative 2. So we have greater than or equal to negative 2. Okay. So as an additional exercise, go ahead and graph this last function here and compare it to its parent function, which is just going to be f of x equals x squared, which was our parabola. 
it start at the origin. Went through 1, 1, negative 1, 1, and then we have 2, 4, and negative 2, 4. And uh, describe the transformation that you see as well as the domain range. Cheers.